Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and video cast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie Rickey here at First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. I'm glad you could join me for this episode. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about this episode is uh, surrounding our final church council meeting that we had on Monday night. Um, I say final because uh, church council will uh, dissolve uh, effective January 1st and our leadership team, the new leadership team that we have voted in, will take effect. Um, and so it was a really uh, special time. Um, I'm so, so beyond grateful for the leadership of this church and for their willingness. So many of them stayed on an extra year during the pandemic and the pastoral change to provide consistency and guidance as we walked through this process of um, developing this change and making sure that it was the right thing for our church to do and at the right time. And so um, definitely as I looked around at the meeting, um, I was getting a little emotional um, just out of gratitude. Uh, we are blessed with such wonderful people who have such a heart for our church. And I know that moving forward, um, that continues to be true. And and hopefully that uh, in doing what we've done in, in shifting this model of leadership, we're freeing people to really serve in the ways that God has called them and led them. And so, <clears throat> I just want to share a little bit about some of the things that were talked about and done during the church council meeting. The first is uh, that we had the budget proposal for 2022. So oftentimes <coughs> that would go before charge conference, but if it's not ready, church council can act as the charge conference and approve the budget for the coming year. And so that was one of the first agenda items that we had. And coming out of finance, they um, recommended a budget uh, that was about 50000 higher than what we had as our estimated giving. Now, that might seem like, whoa, what are you guys doing? But um, one of the things that, that uh, helped kind of put this in context a little bit is that um, we have many years proposed a budget that is higher than uh, what the estimate of giving is. And uh, Mark Mooney, who is on um, church council currently and will be a member of the finance portion of the leadership team, made a really uh, astute comment uh, at the meeting. He said, either as a church, we are terrible at our estimating how much we're planning to give to God, or we are terrible at making budgets and how much we're actually going to spend. This past year, we had the same deal where we uh, approved an estimated budget for 2021 that I think was about uh, 35000 above what our estimate of giving was, something like that. And we're ending, ending the year uh, in a plus of about 40000 So um, I think knowing those kinds of things that, that, um, that the people of this church actually give more than what they say they're going to give or... There's many people that um, uh, just don't turn in the estimate of giving, and that's all right. Uh, but anyway, everyone, both at the finance meeting and at church council, unanimously voted that budget in. Um, and so that is what we're looking for for 2022. And, and the other comment that I was really pleased that, that came out <coughs> during the meeting was that um, an acknowledgement of, of our staff and volunteers and, and how every committee, every staff member, every person who has a budget within the church um, has been such a good steward of their budget. We don't have any committees that are that are uh, spending recklessly or frivolously. Um, everyone is using what what they have been allotted um, faithfully and honorably. Um, and, and that you know we do everything we can to keep our finances, tracked and above board and and transparent as much as we can so if you have questions about you know where is our money going as a church um, diane kish who is our financial assistant would be a great um, resource for you as she's the one who 
writes the our yeah well she writes the checks she doesn't sign them because that's part of our uh accountability <laughs> when it comes to money but she would be a good resource for you uh she she's the keeper of the budget keeper of the the checkbook if you will but i was just really pleased with that and i wanted wanted the church to be aware of that that we did approve that budget that we feel really good about it that everyone who has financial background or history with the finance team understands that um, while on paper it might seem a little um, anxiety producing, the reality is in our church, it, that's not the case. The other reality is that uh, we have money saved in the Dakotas Foundation. Um, we've been really blessed lately to have uh, different surpluses come in. Uh, this past year, we had 52,000 come in that we weren't expecting from the conference pension rebate uh, due to the pandemic and the uh, loans that turned into grants. We had money uh, kind of, we had extra money from that. Not from that in particular, but because we didn't, anyway. All of that to say is we have about 200,000 or a little more than that in the foundation that's money that we can use. Um, and so if it were to be for some reason that, you know, we, we weren't going above and beyond, which um, I have no reason to believe that we won't because God is good and God is faithful and, and you guys are all amazing. Um, we have, we have a cushion. So uh, I've never, you know, it, it's a blessing, honestly, to be in a church that is so financially sound uh, as we are um, it frees us uh, frees up a lot of anxiety it frees up a lot of um, emotional energy uh, when churches are feeling strapped for money uh, they tend to also start to restrict their ministry and and we haven't had to do that and so um, i truly see that as a blessing and and one of the gifts that we have as this church so that was the first piece uh, of last night's or of the church council meeting. The second uh, was the approval from the nominations committee for the leadership team. So uh, at our church council, we did approve to move to the leadership team model. Uh, but part of that process was then people needed to apply for the leadership team. And then the nominations committee would take those applications and kind of put people in the slots that would be appropriate. Uh, and so that's kind of what we've been doing since charge conference is having those applications come in. Uh, we actually had a, a <laughs> really constructive feedback about the applications. And so we actually had an extra meeting and revised the applications into something that is much more um, palatable, palatable maybe isn't the right word, but uh, it, it gets to what we really wanted to get at. It's a better worded, better thought through application than the original one, which I mean, just goes to show that one, we're not perfect in, <laughs> in how we're doing this, but also I hope you see that we're open to feedback and, and grateful when we can work together to make things better. And I'm very grateful for the people who were willing to say something and willing to, to back that up with coming to a meeting and working through it. And, and really that's what we did. We went line by line, question by question, and really hashed things out. And like, what what is it that we're trying to get at here? And what is it that we need? And, um, and so through that process, uh, we ended up uh, having people apply and then uh, nominations met, we had a few more spots, so we started to brainstorm, uh, you know, who who's the type of person that we would love to have on this team, uh, knowing that we were limited only by membership, uh, that the person needs to be a member of the church. And out of that came some really beautiful conversations and, and some encouragements and and now I'm happy and pleased to say that we have a full leadership team that was nominated uh, to church council, uh, including also a role uh, as the leadership advocate. And that role is someone who uh, has voice on the team, no vote at this point, but their job is to keep records of everything and keep everything organized. So a very, very important job. Uh, and so that, uh, that was what was put for put forth to church council last night, and that also was 
unanimously uh, voted on to pass. Uh, and so I am pleased to share with you, this will be kind of, <laughs> unless you're on church council, um, the first time that you're going to be hearing uh, who will comprise of the leadership team for this coming year. Uh, some of these people will stay on more than one year. Some will just come on for the year. Um, normally it would be a three-year rotation, but in this first year, we're going to have people serve one-year terms, two-year terms, and three-year terms. And so, um, <clears throat> anyway... So on our leadership team, uh, the leadership team is comprised of uh, trustees, finance, and SPR, as well as one lay leader and a lay delegate to annual conference. Those are the voting members of leadership team. So comprising our SPR, our, our staff parish relations committee, uh, will be Chad Herman, who is a former lay leader, uh, who's also been on SPR prior to that. He's been very active. I would say that of all the people in the church, he probably attends uh, as many meetings as I do. Uh, so we're really grateful. He was also one of the small group that helped to develop this uh, from the ground up. And so very happy to have him on. Also, we have Susan Shavey, who uh, is another former lay leader in the church, uh, who also has background in SPR, but also has background in HR. <laughs> and so uh, just an incredible resource and gift to us. Uh, so really, really glad about that. And then we also have Amber Rainey coming on, um, and she's not served on SPR before, but uh, we really are excited about having her kind of be trained up and always looking for new leadership. And really, it was someone who we felt um, has a lot to offer, uh, and especially a voice that is needed. And so that's our SPR. Our finance will be uh, made up of Steve Pietola, who is currently the church council chair, uh, who also uh, has background in finance, works at a bank. We have Mark Mooney, again, just incredibly knowledgeable in finance, has been on the finance team at the church uh, for a long time, uh, and, and currently serves on church council. And then Dave Corneman, uh, who Gosh, I mean, if we all had the passion of Dave Corneman, uh, I think, you know, the world would be a great place. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And then looking at our trustees, we have Scott Kaziski, who is the current chair of trustees. Uh, Merle Brandt will be joining trustees, as well as Dan Swihart, who is the former chair of trustees. So again, incredible knowledge and giftedness there. And then for our lay leader, uh, Dan Johnson will be the lay leader moving forward, uh, and that will be a position that will need to be applied for every year. So if that's something that someone's interested in doing, um, every year that will come open. The same person can apply, um, but we just want to make that clear. And then our lay delegate to annual conference this year is Bob Thuey, who will serve on leadership team as well. Um, and we are grateful for him as well. And so those are the voting members. I also am a member. Um, I only vote in the case of a tie, which hopefully doesn't happen. <laughs> and then we have Rhonda Arns, who is our leadership advocate. She will be, again, in charge of keeping everything organized. And then we have Diane Kish as the financial assistant, who is there to um, answer and speak to anything financially related. Uh, for the group. And so I'm, I'm just so pleased. And so that will take effect January 1st. Um, we'll be doing some things in January to really kind of help you, uh, help the leadership team be visible. Um, and I'm just so pleased. I'm so pleased that we got to this point. I've been working on this for uh, a very long time. And, uh, you know, over a year that we've been in this process and, and for it to finally get to this point is pretty incredible. The final uh, thing that we talked about, we, here and there we talked about other things as well, but I would say kind of the major thing that was on people's minds is, as always, COVID and the reality of COVID and uh, the the fact that, that we do mask at the church. Um, when. Obviously, as you can see, if I'm by myself in my office, we do not. But any time that I'm with people, I do. Um, and and just asking the questions of what, you know, what is what does it look like? Uh, where are we at right now? Um, what are the, what is the rationale behind the decisions that we're making? 
Um, and so <clears throat> Dr. Tim Irwin is, uh, is a member of church council and spoke to the church council about that. Um, but I also had, had been having uh, people come to me with those same questions. And in that vein, I had invited um, <clears throat> Dr. Jan jo Dan Johnson and Mary Milroy to come and share a little bit more about uh, why we are where we are. And, and I was very pleased that, that both of them and uh, Dr. Tim Irwin uh, we're saying the same things and on the same page without being prompted. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to switch over and, and, and uh, have Dan and Mary share a little bit. I kind of gave them sort of frequently asked questions that I get um, around COVID and masking and vaccines and things like that. And, uh, and I wanted just to give them an opportunity to share from their experience and their expertise. Um, because as we all know, I am not a medical doctor. <laughs> I am a pastor. And so I like to rely on uh, the medical professionals that we have here in our church. And, and I'm very grateful for, for all of them and for their input and their willingness to, um, to think through these things with me and to uh, help to make the best decisions that we feel um, are, are right for our church and right for our community. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan and Mary. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Mary Milroy. Uh, Pastor Katie has received a number of questions about masking in the church and asked me to say just a few words about the current COVID-19 situation in, in our community. As a physician and as a Methodist, I believe it is my duty to do all I can to promote health and safety for all persons. For that reason, I am vaccinated. I read extensively about the COVID-19 vaccine and do believe the evidence is strong that they protect not just me, but the people around me. I believe the same about wearing a mask, even though I am vaccinated. I am as tired of wearing a mask as I'm sure all of you are. However, the current situation in Yankton is still one of high community spread with 188 active cases in Yankton County as listed on the South Dakota Department Health dashboard for today, December 8th. A recent article in the Press and Dakotan also highlighted the situation at Avera Sacred Heart Hospital and indeed the entire surrounding area. The hospital is full. The staff is exhausted. The Christmas holiday is coming and as a time of family gatherings will likely be a time when numbers increase. I believe strongly that this is not the time to relax our safety precautions. Pastor Katie and the church's health committee will continue to monitor the local numbers and what our, our local providers and hospital capacity are at. As soon as the numbers start to decrease, ideally we would love to see um, active cases below 25 and hospitalized COVID patients below three. That is currently not the situation. Um, and certainly at that time, uh, safety precautions could uh, be relaxed. I believe that also if we stay home when we're not feeling well, continue to mask and get vaccinated, we can make that happen sooner rather than later, which is certainly what we all are looking forward to. Thank you. I'm Dr. Dan Johnson, and I agree with everything that Mary has stated. Uh, I would just like to add that this um, is not the time to let down our guard. The latest variant called Omicron is in Minnesota. It's in Nebraska. It's just a matter of time before it comes to South Dakota. And the current evidence is that this latest variant is about three times more contagious than the original virus that we encountered at the beginning of the pandemic. The um, the state of South Dakota only has 54% of eligible population vaccinated right now. And it's widely believed that in order for herd immunity to occur, there probably needs to be about 70 to 80% of people protected by either vaccination or a recent infection that gives them antibody protection. It's also known that people that have been infected earlier have waning numbers of antibodies so they're not as protected by the latest variants. So vaccination among people that have been infected is also extremely important. 
The number one population group now showing infection is the children. There's only a small percentage of South Dakota children over five years old that have been vaccinated and South Dakota's lagging far behind other states, even our own re region. So again, it's important that we do vaccinate our children as they are a potential pool for the virus to continue to exist within and continue to mutate and evolve, potentially giving us even more variants in the future. Um, I just I just think it's it's a very important time for us with the holiday gatherings to continue to be vigilant and do commonsensical things that give us multiple layers of protection, masks being one of those things, but vaccination being even more important. And I would just strongly urge all people that haven't been vaccinated to thoughtfully consider taking that step because that's what's gonna make this pandemic go away. So thank you for your yeah. time and understanding and let's just continue to be strong and do the smart thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, I wanna thank Dan and Mary for, for taking some time to answer our questions and hopefully that helps provide a little bit of understanding as to why we continue to mask and, and do what we do for the safety of our church and for the benefit of our community. As United Methodists, we do believe in uh, doing no harm, doing good and staying in love with God. And, and we believe that that falls in line uh, uh, with with our current uh, masking. And so I just want to say thank you again to our church council, to the leadership of this church for their amazing work. I can't wait to see uh, how people are going to plug in in the new year now that they are free to find what God is calling them to do. Um, and so that's going to be very exciting. And then also just a quick plug for our Christmas services. Uh, Tuesday, December 21st at 7 p.m. is our Blue Christmas service. That service is geared toward people who are having a hard time during the Christmas and holiday season, who maybe are dealing with grief or depression or anger or whatever it might be. Um, so we just have a service that acknowledges that not everything is jolly and bright um, and a place for you to come and, and be real and authentic in how you're really feeling. And I have found over the years that that uh, worshiping the Blue Christmas service prior to Christmas Eve really allows for Christmas Eve to have more joy in it um, because I've gotten to acknowledge and gotten to feel the hope that only Christ can give through the Blue Christmas service. That being said, our Christmas Eve services will be on Friday, December 24th at 4.30 and 7 p.m. And you are welcome to come. You are welcome to bring your family and friends and neighbors and coworkers. Uh, everybody is welcome. We'd love to have you. And then we'll have regular worship service on Sunday, December 26th at 9 and 10.30. And so I hope to see you this Christmas season. I, I, I can't even tell you how excited it makes me to be able to say that after going through Advent and Christmas last year online, which was whew, rough. Um, and so I really do look forward to sharing the Christmas joy with you. Until next time, God bless. Thank you for joining us on this episode of What's Going On, a video and audio podcast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. We'd love to have you join us for worship on Sundays, and we have two options available. 9 a.m. is our contemporary service, and 10.30 a.m. is our traditional service. You can find those online as well at our website, www.firstumcyankton.org, or on YouTube. 